I just say, I just, I just do it. I mean, because like, what's the worst that could happen, right? Like, if I have a question, and it's like, to an editor, I've never met on a team, I've never worked with, I'm just gonna slack them and ask, because what is the worst thing they are going to do? Hi, everyone. I am super, super excited today, because we have Dominique Davis here today. And she's going to be talking about her journey as a reporter at Business Insider, giving gems for those who are really interested in exploring the writing and reporting space. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, Dominique, can you tell me a little bit about how you got started at Business Insider and what you cover, what you write about? Yeah, so basically I started at VI right after college. I saw that they were hiring on Twitter and like I think uh, the writers of color Twitter page had posted like BI is hiring and so like I just clicked the link because like, I had just graduated and I needed a job and so I applied to be an executive life fellow to cover the lifestyles of executives and um, they brought me on I kind of I that's where I started I, I was hired as an intern or a fellow as we call them and it was for six months and then I moved to New York City I kind of uh, just that was kind of like my training ground and then the pandemic hit in March and I converted to full time that April. And so basically my first full year as a journalist was covering the pandemic, the election and the, uh, the Black Lives Matter protests, which was kind of, I mean, that was like the stakes were immediately very high. <laughs> and so within that time, I mean, it, it was kind of like a bad look to, to keep covering really rich people. And so I was like, well, how do we start talking about, I guess, the future since people were saying that this was gonna completely destroy the lives of, um, of course, everyone, but uh, young people specifically. And so I was like, how do we start getting a pulse on how young people are handling this time? And so I started speaking to like young entrepreneurs to see, you know, how are they adapting their businesses? What's changing in the entrepreneurial landscape for them? Kind of getting like a post-millennial outlook on where things are going. That's kind of how it started. And I've been doing that for a year now. That's super exciting. I know um, you just mentioned when we chatted this writers of color page on Twitter and how you found that like really instrumental in your journey in terms of finding this opportunity. Is that how you found a lot of your previous writing opportunities in the past or you just happened to hear about this page for, from a friend? Like it just seems like by finding that page, it's been really critical in your journey. So I would love to like just hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, well in college, I, I don't think they told us this, but I kind of learned like when you apply through a system, you're just going to be one of many applicants in the system because, you know, like there's a robot and it like reads your resume and everything. So I early on, like in college, I said, I'm only going to apply to email addresses. If a BI was actually the first company that I applied to straight on the website, which is another reason why I never thought I was going to hear back because I was like, oh, I'm going to be one out of many applicants. <laughs> That's why when they responded like a, like a few days later, I was like, oh, snap, <laughs> have I been wrong this whole time? But for the most part, I was following writers of color because they had email addresses that I could just send my resume to. And so that's what I was doing for a while, just sending my email to email addresses of editors and everyone. That is super exciting. I think that's super helpful for a lot of young women, a lot of writers, a lot of reporters who are coming up to know that it's not always just the traditional like application journey that you apply. Sometimes you can take interesting paths like going on the Twitter page. I also like that when we talked, you mentioned that, you know, you were traditionally given kind of covering these like high profile people and you wanted to kind of kind of take a different take and kind of share a different narrative that's often not really covered. How were you able to do that within your organization and kind of get the support of like, whether it be your managers or your team to really buy into what you're doing? Because, you know, when you first hear like young entrepreneurs, like small businesses, it's not necessarily what people get super excited about. So how did you really like get that support, get that interest from your higher ups? Yeah, well, like for part of it, I knew that I could deliver on it because everyone was everyone speaks to the big names and the big companies. And so speaking to the people who aren't so big, you know, there's a huge market for that. And so basically when I started covering it was it was mo mostly about showing proof that our audience wanted to read it. And so like my first article was about a jewelry designer in Paris and he only he's kind of a small jewelry designer and we published his article and it got like over 700,000 page views. 
And so they're like, what about this kid? Do people like, we still don't know. Every time we read up the article, people like hundreds of thousands of people read it. We don't know why people like him. I mean, I, I love him. So I mean, he's, I, I find his business to be really cool. He's worked with like Rihanna and all these big names and stuff. And so, but still very small business, not really a big name at all. And then we, we did it again, like with all these kind of young people and like their small businesses and people just kept reading them. So eventually we were like, oh, I guess people, people really like this. So let's keep doing it. But it was all about really showing that there was a uh, demand for what we were looking at doing. I, I really, really like that. I think at least what I'm hearing from you is that lesson is if you believe in something and, you know, you can bring your receipts, you can back up, you know, what you're doing is worth it. It's valued. Like people are truly interested. You can really get by. And I think that's something like a lot of young people need to hear early in their career. Don't be afraid to, you know, bring your secret sauce. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there because I know sometimes starting out, it's like, you know, stay in your corner, wait your turn, don't speak up too much. You know, you know, I had to pay my dues. How did you kind of like overcome that obstacle that a lot of people face, especially in the writing and creative space where it's like, I should like just wait my turn till I kind of bring my ideas. How do you give people and encourage people to, you know, speak up and show that I have something to bring to the table and feel comfortable actually sharing it while still being so young in a established environment? I mean, they could just not respond and then they don't respond. I mean, so I just do it. I mean, like there was that quote, courage is not the absence of fear, but the mastery of it. I mean, they just do it, you know, and that's, that's, that's what I do. I, I just do it because why not? I like that. I like that. How do you think your work impacts people, whether it's your readers, whether it's the people you're covering? How do you think your work impacts people? I'm not sure. So I only, people, well, people have now started to come to me telling me how things have happened after uh, I write about them, which has been cool. I, I know one kid was like, yeah, I got an offer to be on Shark Tank. There are people who, other big publications, you know, I had someone who, New York Times reached out afterwards, you know, like all these, because like when you're covering young people and especially marginalized communities, all you need is like one big a publication or like someone who has legitimacy in the space to say hey this person's legitimate and it kind of gives them it kind of puts them it, it kind of legitimizes legitimizes them as an entrepreneur so that other people in the business are like hey well look at this guy he was just covered here i guess he must be the real deal i think that what i've been doing is helping kind of validate you know young people in marginalized communities uh, to be seen as the the business people that they are and so that's that's been nice yeah that's beautiful. And I guess, what advice do you have for people who are these like young entrepreneurs who, you know, want to be covered in these publications? What advice do you have for them? Because I'm sure you get tons of pitches. What advice do you have for those people who are like, you know, maybe I just need this one break to really put myself out there. What advice do you have for them who might not be getting that coverage that want to? Yeah, well, you know, coverage is, you know, notoriously hard to get. Writers, reporters are always busy. I think my inbox has like 9,000 unread emails and I'm just going to delete all of them. I probably will not even read them. And so my advice, I would create a sub stack. Um, that's what I did when I was looking for a job. I created a sub stack and then I put on my resume that I was the editor in chief of my sub stack. And my sub stack was just covering like, um, like black owned businesses and highlighting black voices. And so I would, that's a good way to start getting a narrative built around. I would also use LinkedIn a lot, uh, really get your work out there, add a bunch of reporters, editors, other people on LinkedIn. That's what I do. Instagram, I, I use that religiously, really good way to reach out and get your work highlighted and, and stuff. I mean, all you need is like one person, one outlet <laughs> to uh, latch on. Um, you wanna create like a sense of uh, like FOMO because everyone's looking for the next big story, the next big thing. And so if you could, either you could position yourself like that or you can position yourself in a different angle and say like, you know, it's, it's all about how you pitch yourself and how you sell your own story. That's how you get <laughs> into the media. So it's, it's kind of a mind game, but all you need is one person. I really, I really, really love that. And I guess my last question would be, if you were to give advice to your younger self, 
or someone in college who, you know, wants to be the next you or is really inspired by the work you do, what advice would you give them? There is a quote that my grandmother had uh, on the kitchen or like it was like a, on a plaque in the kitchen and it said like, don't worry if you work hard and your rewards are few, the mighty oak was once a nut like you. <laughs> I don't think about that a lot, you know, just like working harder and working smarter and really paying your, or, you know, it's not even just paying your dues. It's like work harder, work smarter, have an outlook, set the goals and the benchmarks you want to hit. And then, you know, however, how you hit them, that's life. Like that's the journey of life. You don't know how you're going to hit them. If, if you say like, I want to do this one day. Well, the story of how you do it is the story of, of your life. So, I mean, you, you just have to, you, you live that journey. And so I would say to my younger self, kind of, I guess that, just keep working harder and work smarter. <laughs> I love that, I love that, work harder, work smarter. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show today and talking to our viewers. I'm really, really excited to see more of your stories. And if you want to check out more of Dominique Davis stories, you can check it out on the Business Insider. She has stories on young entrepreneurs, small business. You don't want to miss it. She's also on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the social media handles. So make sure you follow her so you can stay up to date on all the amazing things she's doing. Dominique, before we go, is there anything you'd like to mention? Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate everything. Thank you for having me.